Good morning. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to talk about the equipment you need uh, to get your bees home. Hopefully from the last video uh, you managed to reach out to uh, your local bee club, uh, a bee supplier in the area, uh, a fellow beekeeper, um, or uh, one of the suppliers. On my last video I put some links down below. Uh, if you're in my neck of the woods up here in Alberta, um, you could contact any of them. Our bees will usually arrive up here, usually about the end of uh, uh, May, beginning of June. The reason for this is it gives them time to uh, build up the nukes, uh, raise our queens, send the, uh, the queens out to the hives, let them go on their mating flight, so that when you get your package of bees, you are getting a mated queen. Um, it's going to save you probably a couple, anywhere from six or seven days to a couple weeks. Um, when you get your bees home. So if you're already got a mated queen, then of course we can transport them from whatever you're getting them in, whether it's a package, a nuke or a hive, basically right into your apiary and uh, into the, your, your hive equipment so they're ready to go. So as mentioned last time, if you're getting a package of bees, uh, they'll come either in the tube, uh, the supplier will supply those, or if you're getting them in a package, it'll come in a screen box, the supplier will supply those as well. If you're getting them in a nuke, um, from your, your supplier, of course, you can purchase the nukes. We talked about the plastic one or the wooden one. Um, your wooden one probably won't come all painted up like this, but uh, we can clean that up and uh, get that painted afterwards. But today what we're going to talk about and uh, hopefully save you a little bit of money is I'm going to show you how I build my nukes. Um, I'll give you some measurements and uh, we'll get this built so that we can get this off to the supplier uh, in time so that uh, this can be used to transport your bees home. I'm going to finish my coffee and uh, right after that we'll get into building a nuke. Okay, let's go over some of the tools that we're going to require for this build. Um, first, safety first. Uh, a pair of safety glasses and a pair of hearing protection. So the reason I use those is I'm going to be making most of my cuts uh, today with the table saw. Um, gets a little bit noisy and of course uh, you want to be able to make sure that uh, we have all our digits when we're done. Always follow the manufacturer's recommendations and safety precautions with any of the equipment you're, ha you're having. Uh, follow those. I might not follow them all the time. That's no excuse. Uh, just make sure you have the proper training and uh, follow the safety recommendations first. Um, like I said, most of my cuts are going to be made on a table saw today. They don't have to be made on a table saw. You can use a skill saw if you want. Um, I just uh, I have the table saw, so I'm going to use it. If you don't have a table saw, a skill saw, you can also do them with a hand saw. And if you still want to do this build, but you don't have any of those, where you purchase your plywood from, most of the hardware stores, if you give them the dimensions, uh, they'll be more than happy to cut that plywood down to those sizes for you. Uh, we're going to need a pencil so that we can mark things out. Uh, I got a straight edge and a tape measure. Uh, that'll just make sure that we get the, the right dimensions that we want. Uh, not required, but uh, I always like to have a, a little square on hand. That way we can make sure as I put these things together, they're nice and square. Um, through all of this equipment, if you plan on using these nukes and maybe make a, a second um, box to go on top, um, and the same thing when you're purchasing your hive equipment. I'll go over that when we get to it, but try to make sure that you're purchasing your hive equipment from the same supplier. Uh, there's just some small variations or changes in dimensions of the boxes, and they uh, it's not that it's a big deal, but they don't stack up exactly the same. Um, you know, a quarter of an inch here, a quarter of an inch there, it just, uh, uh, if they're all the same size, it just makes it a whole lot better. Um, we're going to need some small nails, uh, hammer and nails if, uh, if you don't have it. I'm going to be using a brad nailer today with some uh, one inch uh, 18 gauge nails. Uh, just make it a little bit quicker for the video. Um, not required, but I got some of these uh, Bessie corner squares uh, or corner clamps, it's just going to make it a little bit easier for the video to get everything clamped up and keep it square as I'm going through and doing that. Some glue, um, whatever glue you want, uh, Elmer's works good, I like tight bond, but uh, any, any outdoor uh, white glue will work just fine. We're going to need a stapler and that's going to uh, staple in our hardware cloth. So as I mentioned previously, ventilation in, in your nukes is extremely important. Uh, the first time I brought some nukes home, I didn't have enough ventilation in the nuke. Um, a lot, I'm going to say about 50% of my bees, I ended up uh, killing. They, they just didn't have enough oxygen. They suffocated in there, which is why, like I say, it, it is really important to make sure that you have enough airflow through that nuke, um, you know, to keep them cool. 
but not too cold, but at the same time, they, they need to be able to, to breathe. So um, one eighth inch hardware cloth, uh, you can get this at just about any of the stores, uh, hardware stores, um, things like that. I like the one eighth cloth. It works good for my screen boards and everything else. And I actually buy it. I found it went through quite a bit. So I buy it in a, a fairly large roll. And then with a heavy pair of scissors or a pair of tin snips, we can cut the, the sizes and stuff like that that we're gonna need out of it. Um, I mentioned before, I got these uh, entrance reducers. Um, they actually turn around and they spin on there so that you can uh, either have it ventilated, you can block it right off, or of course you can allow them to go through. It's also got this little slot here which a uh, worker bee can get through, but your queen bee can't. So that's a little uh, handy as well as we get going. And then I just got a uh, number eight machine screw with a nylon hex nut, and I'll, that's what I'll use to fasten this in there. Uh, once again, I got them off of Amazon. I got a package of 10, and they weren't very expensive. And uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, safety first, a pair of safety glasses, and a pair of uh, earmuffs. So some hearing protection and eye protection. All right, we'll go over the nuke in a minute. I wanted to point something out. Um, it is the third week of January up here in, uh, in Alberta. You notice I have my, uh, my shop door open. Um, extremely rare to be able to do that up in this neck of the country this time of year. It's plus four outside today. Um, and to work with my shop door open in a t-shirt in January up here in Alberta is extremely rare. Um, but uh, I guess the weatherman last night said it's, it's officially the warmest December and January on record. So um, I'm gonna enjoy the weather while we can. All right, let's uh, dig out that nuke. We'll pull that nuke apart and I'll show you uh, the dimensions and why I build them this way. Okay, so this is a, uh, I build it as a four or a five frame nuke. Uh, some of the suppliers up here, a lot of times they'll just provide a four frame nuke. Um, I built it a little bit bigger to accept a five frame root nuke for, for two reasons. One, the dimensions I, I, I built this out of were, um, some dimensions were a little bit bigger, some were a little bit smaller. And the reason I did that was to get as many out of a single sheet of plywood as I possibly could. So uh, um, let's get into it. So I just use these little bungee straps to hold the lid on. It keeps the lid on so that it, uh, while I'm transporting it, doesn't, uh, they don't come off and you end up with the bees. These are just picture hangers. Uh, once again, got them from the hardware store and they're just screwed on with a little uh, half inch screw. Um, inside, so there's, there's five frames in here as mentioned. Uh, a lot of times it'll just be a four frame nuke is all you get. So this is probably what you'll end up getting from the supplier. So there's a little bit of room in there and it's big enough that if you only have four frames in there, you'll notice the frames can't fall down. So if you're, you're traveling, you don't want to bump it around too, too much, but if for some reason they got bumped, your frames aren't gonna fall down and your bees aren't gonna get uh, damaged in there. If you get a four frame nuke when you come home and uh, you don't have time to put them into your hive, it's easy to stick the, the fifth frame in there. They're still the proper dimensions and uh, you, know, you can open it up and you can basically sit this out in your apiary and if you didn't have time to get right to them, your bees would, uh, would have one frame that they could build on so they'd be quite comfortable in here. Um, and once again, um, the hive entrance reducer, as you can see, it just kind of spins around. So we'll go through all of those uh, as well. So dimensions. We're gonna need, uh, once again, this is all gonna be out of half inch plywood. So the sides, we have the, the two sides, they're 19 and an eighth inch long and uh, 10 and 3 eighths inches deep. The reason they're 10 and 3 eighths inches deep is as you can see the frames sit on a little bit of a lip inside here. So uh, let's just pull these out so you can see. Hopefully the camera shows it. So there's a lip that these frames will sit down on. This, this here is designed so that and same thing in your hive boxes, it, uh, it sits on them so your frames actually hide or hang in there. So the, the sides are, are, are cut to a dimension to make it easy to do that. Um, we have the ends, so the ends are nine and a half inches uh, deep by seven and a half inches wide. Um, the bottom is 20 inches long. That gives us about, uh, about three quarters of an inch to an inch on the front here for a little bit of a landing board so the bees can come in and land on that and, and head on in. But it's uh, 20 inches uh, long by eight and a half inches wide. 
the, the top, and I'll put all these dimensions on there. So the top, uh, the very top piece, it's big enough so that it fits over the top with everything that's on there. So this is 21 and a quarter long by nine and a half inches wide. What else do we have? Um, we have uh, actually, so we, we've got the two inch lip that goes all the way around. The reason I made this two inches is we're gonna be making a board that I didn't do on my first nukes. And basically it's gonna be a inner cover. The reason I wanna put an inner cover on here is if you did manage to use this as a, um, a queen breeding nuke or, um, or, or a resource hive or something like that, you wanna be able to have the ability to put a feeder jar on the top. So we're gonna be making a inner cover with a hole on it to allow the, the, the feeding jar to go on here. Um, just kind of one of the modifications that, that I'll be doing to it. So um, two inches deep all the way around. And of course we have two inches on the front, which covers in the, uh, the ledge here where the boards will hang on it. So those dimensions are uh, for the top, um, what do we got? We've got 20 and a quarter. So the long ones are 20 and a quarter by two inches. They're nine and a half by two inches on the, on the ends. And the piece that goes on both ends here is eight and a half inches wide by two inches. So um, those are pretty much our measurements. Uh, once again, a lot of these I adjusted slightly so that I could get as many of these new boxes out of a single sheet of plywood. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, dig our sheet of plywood out. Let's get some of these uh, pieces cut. I'm not gonna bore you with all of that. I'll keep it in here, maybe speed things up a little bit once again to keep these videos as short as I possibly can. All right, let's get started. So we got all our pieces cut out. Um, one piece I forgot to mention and the dimensions uh, of it, uh, I was saying I wanted to make an inner cover. So I, I cut a couple extra pieces. Um, I had to find some more plywood. I didn't quite have enough plywood. So I got, uh, I got four boxes um, out of that sheet of plywood. So four, four nukes out of the sheet of plywood and three inner covers. And I wanted some, uh, some inner covers from my other ones as well. So I had to find a little bit extra plywood, but the inner cover dimension, um, which will fit right on top of the nuke, I'll show you how that works, was eight and a half by 20. So we have to add that to our dimensions. Um, so we got our inner cover, eight and a half by 20. We got our top, which was 21 and a quarter by nine and a half. We got our bottom, which was 20 by eight and a half. We got our two sides, 19 and an eighth by 10 and three eighths. We got our ends, which were seven and a half by nine and a half. And then we have our two inch strips. So for the lid, uh, two by 20 and a quarter, two by nine and a half. And then for the end of our nuke boxes to uh, cover where they're hanging was two by eight and a half. So we have all those cut. A um, Couple other things that we want to do as well. Um, I just picked one end and on the inside of the end, I, I, we have to drill our hole for our entrance. So I just found the center of the board, which was over three and three quarter inches. And our, our reducers, or our entry blocks, will, will basically screw on there. So the hole that goes through is one inch hole. We're gonna drill a one inch hole. And I brought that up from the bottom, um, and uh, pardon me, uh, an inch and a quarter is what I brought that up. So we're gonna take this over to the drill press and we're gonna use an arbor bit and we'll drill that hole. Uh, before I do that, one other thing I forgot to mention, and I didn't uh, mention it earlier, is I like to take a sanding block. This is just uh, 120 grit sandpaper on a sanding block, and I'm going to knock all the corners off of it. It just uh, 
makes it a little bit nicer and of course we don't end up with any uh, any splinters so I'm going to do that first then I'll take you over and we will drill the hole in the end. Let's head on over to the drill press. We have our hole drilled in the one end. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to start to assemble our box. I'm just gonna take the inner cover, uh, the lid, we're gonna set that off to the side along with our two inch strips right now. So we'll just set that over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the, the two sides and the ends. Uh, once we get that put together, then we'll put it onto our bottom. Uh, once again, we wanna make sure that everything gets glued really well. Uh, I'm going to put the safety glasses on. Once again, I'm going to be using the brad nailer, but you can just use a hammer and finishing nails uh, just as easy. All right. So let's start. And like I said, just for the ease of the video, I'm going to use these, uh, these end clamps. They come in really super happy. I'm just going to grab two more. And then we put one on each corner. All right, so as we put this together, these ends, obviously this is gonna be the bottom, and you can see they don't quite match up. There's a, there's a gap here. That's exactly what we want. We're gonna put it flush with the end and flush with the bottom. Um, the next side's gonna come on like this, so we're, we're actually gonna end up with that gap. That's exactly what we want. So uh, let's start and let's put these together. This is where you'll see these clamps come in super handy. But once again, you really don't need them. You can uh, you can get by without them if you don't have them. I figure I have the tools. Why not use them? Once again, make sure the bottom is flush and lined up before you uh, tack it all together. Do the same to the other end. And I'm just going to leave the clamps on for now. <clears throat> see how this is working. Guess I could have uh, saved a little bit of time and had these pre-adjusted, but well, things just don't always work out that way.
the exact same thing to the other side. It just makes it a little bit easier with the, the clamps on and they can now hang over the end of the table. Just about time for some new glue. These uh, clamps, if uh, they work really well, and when you're putting your hives and stuff together too, they work extremely well to uh, ensure that everything stays square. They're all lined up. Now put the bottom on. So we can either wait uh, a little bit to make sure this thing, you know, can dry with the glue and everything like that to stay square. But uh, as you can see, it's extremely rigid already. So um, we're going to go ahead right ahead and we're going to put the bottom board on. And of course, it's going to overhang, so we want it to overhang where we have our entrance. So that will give, uh, once again, the landing board for the bees. is just about ready to go. Now we're going to grab the two little pieces go on to the end. Of course they were, oh, I grabbed one of each here. We want to make sure we have the right ones. So they're going to be the shorter ones and they're going to go right on the end and they're just going to go flush with the top. That's going to create our, our lip inside there. So we can go ahead and get them glued on and ready to go. And I don't put any along here. I'm using one inch nails, half inch plywood, so there should be lots, but I have some three quarter inch. I'm gonna change out and I'll put a couple three quarter inch to, uh, finishing nails and we'll tack that in after. All right, the new box here is pretty much finished. We gotta do the lid yet. But as you can see, one of our frames We'll sit right down in there. So let's complete the lid. We'll just set this off to the side, let it dry. And it's gonna be the same thing here. I like to build the uh, two inch sides first, simply because I have the clamps, it just uh, makes it a little bit easier for me. On this one, the lid pieces are gonna go over the end. Uh, this is important so that it'll fit and slide over top of our, uh, our box when we're done. I'm just going to let this one dry, so make sure it stays square. Alright, let's talk 
about this inner cover really quickly. So the inner cover, what I did is I just went from corner to corner and I drew an X in the center. What we want to do there is, as I mentioned, we want to use a feeding jar. So this is a typical feeding jar. It's got holes in the lid. Um, I'm not exactly sure what size of holes, but I know a number 60 drill bit just fits inside of them. We're going to want to uh, cut a hole in the center lid for this jar to sit down through so it can sit on there and we can feed the bees in underneath. Um, I don't know if I have one. I might have to go see if I can find it. I do believe it's an inch and three quarters, I think, or 70 mil. No, pardon me, two and three quarters. Um, I'll be right back. I may have to uh, come up with something for this. All right, I managed to find a, uh, a two and three quarter inch hole saw. So the, uh, the cap for it just fits right in there perfectly. Let's see, where did I put my jar? So you can now see that the jar will sit right in there, fairly secure. And uh, we can now feed the bees through the inner cover. So once again, that is a two and three quarter inch hole saw. Um, I have a few to do, so I'll drill all those up. And uh, But our glue should be dry on our cover by now. Let's uh, finish that off. Extra glue. All we really have left to do is put our latches on and put our entry on. But uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to run over it really quickly uh, with a sander. And of course, I can't do that until the glue dries. So I will set this aside for a little bit and we'll let that dry. And then I'll uh, hit it with a sander. And then uh, we can decide whether we want to paint it. Um, I don't think I'm going to paint this one. I have a couple ideas for some of this equipment that. Uh, uh, that we build together. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, but in the meantime, I guess uh, once again, that would pretty much be about it for this video. Um, I will wrap it all up. Like I said, there's no use everybody watching the uh, sadness. I will uh, um, maybe put a couple short clips right at the end and just putting the, uh, the hardware on here. Um, once again, make sure that you've got your bees ready. Uh, this box here will be able to send to your, um, your supplier. Uh, that way they can put the, the, uh, their nukes in there, or pardon me, your nuke. Uh, it'll be their frames that they'll put in here. We won't have to send them frames, maybe one. Um, depends whether you're buying a four or frame, uh, five frame nuke. Um, but uh, if you have secured your, your bees, here in Alberta, uh, one of the things that we have to do is we have to register our, our hives. So I will put a link down below um, where you can go and you can register. There's a few things you need to know. So you need to know who you're getting your hive from. Um, they'll ask you a few questions like that. It's, uh, it doesn't cost anything to register. Um, basically what it does is uh, it'll, they'll give you a heads up notice uh, as far as disease control and stuff like that. If there is a breakout of uh, of uh, any diseases, they will send you a quick email and let you know that, you know what, just to be on the watch out for this for in your area. At the end of the year, they usually will send out a survey just to see how your hives did, um, whether you sold any honey, if your, your hives and stuff like that had increased, but always check with your local regulations. Let's make sure that uh, we're, we're doing this, uh, you know, uh, the proper way. But uh, yeah, here in Alberta, you do have to register your hives. Until then, um, I guess we will see everybody back in a couple weeks and what we'll probably look at doing then is we will probably start the build on our hive equipment 
or actually, you know what? I think the next video I'll go over um, all of our safety equipment that you need. So maybe we'll go over, you know, the um, where to purchase that stuff, what you're going to need to get started. That's that's uh, where we'll go the next time. But anyways, until then, um, have a great day. We'll see you next time.